So my name is uh, Yorgos Karakousis, and thank you, uh, Debbie, for inviting me today. Uh, and I'm in the Department of Surgical Oncology at the University of Pennsylvania, and I wanted to kind of give you a flavor of what's being done from a surg uh, surgical perspective in the treating patients with um, pheochromocytomas and paragangliomas. And particularly, most of the focus will be on pheochromocytomas and really getting to um, the different ways that we can approach these surgically, uh, with particular attention to comparing the laparoscopic approach to the open uh, traditional approaches. So fear of as we've uh, already heard about this morning, are, are tumors that arise from the medulla of the adrenal, adrenal gland. There's a 10% rule that, that we're familiar with in terms of their location, in terms of their malignancy potential, in terms of their, um, whether they're located within or extra adrenally. Paragangliomas are similar uh, type tumors that are extra adrenal, but closely related, uh, and tumors of the sympathetic nervous system. And these tumors can frequently be associated with uh, genetic mutations, such, such as the RET, VHL, NF1, or uh, SDHBD uh, uh, mutations. So fear of chromocytomas, their clinical presentation, again, uh, summarizing what we've heard this morning already, the, the classic triad of palpitations, headache, and sweating, um, oftentimes with uh, elevated heart rate or paroxysmal um, blood pressure uh, changes. And these become uh, important when we treat patients with fear of chromocytosis in the operating room because you can have these kind of fluctuations exacerbated with surgical trauma. Uh, and with anesthesia, so it's important to be monitoring uh, these patients very carefully in the operating room uh, to control uh, blood pressure. The diagnosis um, is made with um, evaluation of, of metanephrines, um, both in the urinary tract and, and in the blood, and, um, and also with the use of diagnostic imaging, and uh, that involves both CAT scans and MRIs, and some of the features uh, that, that uh, we see um, with pheochromocytomas, they're oftentimes larger, um, tumors of the adrenal gland, um, they oftentimes have a round or distinct border. They, they, they have an increased sort of density on CT scan um, relative to other tumors of the adrenal gland. They have a sort of characteristic appearance by MRI. They appear very hyperintense relative to the liver by MRI, oftentimes vascular. And it's not uncommon to see areas of hemorrhage or cystic components within these uh, tumors. And this is just an example of a um, pheochromocytoma on MRI uh, image where you can see this um, rounded bright tumor. And this is the looking into the patient. This is uh, the back of the patient. This is the front of the patient. These are the kidneys over here. Uh, this is the gallbladder and the liver. And these, this tumor sticks out as a bright uh, round tumor uh, just in front of the left kidney there. Um, these tumors, uh, either pheochromocytomas or paragangliomas, um, are not, if you suspect these tumors, they're not uh, recommended for biopsy to try to get a tissue diagnosis before removing them. That's because uh, biopsying these tumors can trigger a catecholamine release and a, a hypertensive crisis situation. So we do not recommend biopsy of these tumors up front if we suspect the diagnosis of either paragangliomas um, or that could be functional or um, pheochromocytomas. Preoperative considerations for patients with um, pheochromocytomas um, involves um, medication blockade, and that involves typically an alpha blocker, um, a drug commonly used as phenoxybenzamine, and oftentimes combining that with a beta blocker for symptoms of elevated heart rate. Um, and as I mentioned, planning carefully with the anesthesia team uh, to keep the patients well hydrated and be prepared for blood pressure fluctuations at the, in the operating room that can be managed with uh, various medications. Uh, these patients routinely get an arterial line for continuous uh, measuring of their blood pressure while they're in the operating room. So as I mentioned, there, there are different surgery approaches to treating uh, patients with um, pheochromocytomas. Um, there are traditional open approaches, uh, which involve uh, the, the classic incisions. Um, and then there are laparoscopic uh, approaches, which involve the use of cameras to look inside the abdomen and, and be able to remove these through less, uh, through smaller incisions. And also there is the development of this retroperitoneoscopic approach, which is also a type of minimally invasive approach, um, but unlike the laparoscopic approach, which involves going through the abdomen cavity to get back to the adrenal gland, which lies in the back part of your of your uh, abdomen, 
it involves going through the backside um, and finding the adrenal gland that way. So you really stay outside of the abdominal cavity uh, through this retroperitoneoscopic approach. So the open approaches are multiple different ways um, to get uh, these, these glands out. There's, there, there are ways you can do it through the flank, uh, make an incision through the flank, through the abdomen, through an open mi uh, midline incision. I'll show you just some schematics of those going through the backside or doing a procedure called a thoracoabdominal incision where you also make an incision both, both in the chest and the abdomen to remove it. And in some cases for very large tumors, that, that type of incision uh, is necessary. So these are just some uh, schematic depictions of the open approaches, the lateral flank approach, a patient's position sort of on their side, and the incision is made just uh, underneath the ribs or between ribs um, on the, the side there. There's the posterior retroperitoneal approach where the patient is often placed on their stomach down at the time of surgery and we go in through the backside, um, oftentimes between or underneath ribs to be able to remove the adrenal gland in that manner. These two types of approaches have largely been replaced by the use of laparoscopy. Um, they tend to be bigger incisions, uh, more difficult for patients to heal from uh, because of their extensiveness, because of the pain that can be associated based on their location near the ribs. And so these, these approaches, while we uh, occasionally do them for large or particularly difficult tumors, are often not our preferred approach for treating patients with uh, these tumors. The other uh, open approach that I mentioned was a transabdominal approach, uh, which goes from the front side of the abdomen. So uh, we can often make an incision uh, up and down the middle and get to the adrenal glands, which are on the back side or if it's just one side adrenal uh, tumor, then uh, make incisions either on the left um, or on the right beneath the ribs and approach the adrenal glands in that manner. So um, laparoscopic adrenalectomy is a technique that, that was developed in the 90s and, and we're continuing to improve on it um, to, to find ways to uh, do it with fewer port sites um, and in a more facile manner. Uh, this is just a schematic depiction of the laparoscopic approach. The patient's often positioned in, on their side again, and we use various instruments uh, to, and a camera to be able to work uh, and remove the adrenal gland uh, through these uh, port sites. Oftentimes, from a, for a right-sided tumor, we use uh, uh, one more port, and, that's, and I'll show you some pictures of that that, that involves uh, uh, moving the liver and retracting the liver to give us exposure to the adrenal gland on that side. So this is just a schematic of what the, what the surgery uh, involves in removing um, the adrenal uh, gland. And this is a, a, for a left adrenal gland. Um, the adrenal gland sits um, above the left side of the colon and sort of tucked underneath the spleen and the pancreas there. So the surgery involves um, pulling down the colon to some extent and, and pushing away the spleen to give us exposure to the adrenal gland, which sits in this area. Um, Particular important consideration for pheochromocytoma surgery is um, you want to really minimize manipulation of the tumor um, until you've clipped the, the blood, uh, the, the vein that drains the adrenal gland. And that's because by just manipulation of the tumor at the time of surgery, that can release catecholamines and cause high blood pressure elevations at the time of surgery. So one of our, from a surgeon's perspective, one of the early uh, things that we try to do when we remove these tumors is to find the adrenal vein that drains these tumors and to clip it. And that prevents any release of the catecholamines coming from the adrenal gland. And then we can go ahead and dissect out the rest of the gland and remove it. These are some schematics of uh, laparoscopic adrenalectomy. Um, on the right side, as I mentioned, the right side has the, the consideration of the liver. It's tucked sort of underneath the right side of the liver, so we have to dissect away the liver and push the liver back, giving us exposure to the right adrenal gland. But the concept is the same. We try to identify the adrenal vein, strains into the vena cava early on so we can clip it. We like to see the, the, the border between the vein and the vena cava. And then we can dissect out the gland using a variety of instruments that we have, um, uh, cautery instruments that we have uh, in the operating room. So um, one question people often ask is, how, do, how does one decide about um, whether to do the surgery laparoscopically or open? Sometimes uh, the decision is not an easy one, but frequently the decision uh, takes into account factors, both patient and tumor factors. Um, for large tumors, uh, and there's no specific cutoff of what a large tumor, you can say, well, what's the size cutoff? There's no specific cutoff. 
Um, but for large tumors or tumors where there's concern that the, the pheochromocytoma may be invading into adjacent structures based on the preoperative imaging studies, or if the patient's had multiple prior surgeries and there's a lot of scar tissue on the inside of the abdomen, these may be reasons why to consider the open or traditional approaches. It may not be feasible to do the minimally invasive laparoscopic approach in these situations. So there are a lot of studies that have looked at comparing the laparoscopic to the open surgery approach. This is an example of one large study that was published looking at, uh, this is actually um, a national uh, uh, data survey using um, information from veteran hospitals and non-veteran hospitals. <laughs> And they compared um, the laparoscopic to the open. They had over 300 patients in each group. And the morbidity, which is the complication rate, was significantly lower in the laparoscopic um, group than in the open group. And the length of stay was significantly lower in the laparoscopic group than in the open group, almost by half. And it's a little bit unfair to do this kind of comparison because, again, I told you that there's sometimes we, uh, the reasons why we can't do a laparoscopic approach. So to say the open does worse than the laparoscopic may be in part due to the fact that they're more complex tumors that have to be removed. And so one would expect to have a lengthier hospital stay or perhaps more complications associated with removing them. But it does suggest though that if feasible, the laparoscopic uh, approach may be the way to do these tumors because it leads to quicker healing there are fewer incidences of pneumonia, sepsis, heart problems, uh, reintubation after surgery, wound infections, um, which again is not unexpected. If you have a smaller wound, less chance you're going to get a wound infection than if you have a bigger wound. And um, this is another study that looked at the same sort of um, uh, the same sort of question. This this um, compared again the laparoscopic to the open approach. And in this particular study, similar findings were noted that laparoscopy is associated with shorter operative times, so less time in the operating room, shorter hospital stays, less time in the hospital, less need for being in the ICU after the laparoscopic approach compared to the open, less need for blood, trans less blood loss and less need for blood transfusions, and less pain uh, after the surgery. So again, if you can do it with smaller incisions, um, it may be the preferred way to go. Now people can say, well, you know, pheochrome chromocytomas, I worry about laparoscopy. Um, you know, as clinicians, we worry about could the insufflation of the abdomen, because the laparoscopy involves insufflating the abdomen with, uh, with carbon dioxide to be able to, to really expose the, thing, uh, the structures you need to expose. Could that trigger some kind of catecholamine release? Could that make things worse um, or more unstable for the patient? And it turns out it doesn't seem to be the case. Um, you know, this was a study that was a randomized trial that, that randomized patients to the open or laparoscopic approach and looked at parameters like blood pressure and heart rate while the patient was in the operating room and found really no significant differences between the two groups, whether they were done laparoscopically or open, suggesting that it's safe to do these surgeries laparoscopically uh, we can get the, the patients through these procedures safely in the operating room, and the recovery seems to be quicker. Um, and again, this is, this is a study that looks specifically just at laparoscopic uh, surgeries. And I think the two things that are, are interesting with this study, this large experience, is that you know, even tumors over six centimeters in size, so those are fairly big uh, tumors, you know, on the order of three, three four inches tumors. And, and the largest one in this, this study was up to 12 centimeters. So close to five inches uh, tumors, so they're not small tumors, can oftentimes be removed laparoscopically. Um, and, and in this particular study, 70 of the, uh, nearly 70% of the patients went home by post-operative day two. So they're, they're going home pretty soon after their surgery. And no patients required um, blood transfusion from this type of approach. There's another minimally invasive approach that I um, mentioned uh, earlier, which is this retroperitoneoscopic approach. So it's uh, unlike the laparoscopy where we go through the abdomen to get to the back, here we go through the back. Um, and, and so you don't actually, actually ever enter into the abdominal cavity. So you stay outside of the abdominal cavity because the kidneys sit really in the back side of the abdomen and that's where the adrenal gland sits. And so this approach has also been gaining popularity um, and may be a useful adjunct to treating patients, particularly patients who've had prior extensive abdominal surgery. So where laparoscopy may not be an option because there may be too much scar tissue to go in through the backside and remove the adrenal glands in that manner rather than having to do an open incision. 
Um, this approach uses a little bit higher insufflation pressures. It's higher, it's harder to get the, the, the space dissected open so you can dissect because you're not really in the cavity. You're sort of um, in a, a space outside of a cavity. So, it's, so it uses a little bit higher insufflation pressures, but actually studies that have looked at that suggested that that's very safe to do and doesn't, again, cause a triggering of catecholamine release from these type of tumors. Uh, and these are just some pictures of this uh, posterior retroperitoneoscopic approach where we place ports um, and, and can dissect out the adrenal gland in this, uh, in this manner. So postoperatively, uh, important considerations uh, that, uh, we, that we have to consider in patients with pheochromocytoma is the close monitoring of blood pressure. And so these are patients who come in on multiple medications for their blood pressure. Um, and well control, now we remove this source that's causing their elevation blood pressure, and their blood pressure can drop. So it's extremely important after surgery uh, to be keeping a close eye on the blood pressure so we can start to withdraw the medicines that they had been on before surgery in a safe manner. So in summary, pheochromocytomas are tumors, uh, actually I have a disclaimer before, so I have a pop question uh, at the end here. So, <laughs> so pay attention to the summary really carefully here so you get it right. Um, the pheochromocytomas are tumors of the adrenal gland that secrete catecholamines and for which surgery is generally recommended in patients that are otherwise medically fit to undergo surgery. Um, particular important preoperative considerations in these patients is, is uh, premedicating them with alpha blockers to try to, um, to, to minimize the likelihood of labile blood pressures either at or around the time of surgery. Um, surgery can be performed through minimally invasive approaches. I talked to you about two such approaches, the laparoscopic and the retroperitoneoscopic approach, or via traditional open surgeries. And we talked about some of the reasons why you may have to have an open approach versus a laparoscopic approach. Some of those are the size of the tumor, large tumors, or patients with multiple prior abdominal surgeries, or where there's concern that the, the tumor may be invading into adjacent structures where it becomes uh, uh, simply not safe to remove them laparoscopically. Laparoscopy appears to be associated with shorter hospital stays, less blood loss, and fewer complications. So here's the question here. So I guess we'll do a voting by hands here. All the following regarding surgery for fear of chromocytomas are true except one, treatment with alpha blocking medications properly is important to help prevent hemodynamic instability during surgery. Two, there are several surgical approaches to fear of chromocytomas, including laparoscopic open and retroperitoneoscopic. Three, laparoscopic surgery is associated with longer hospital stays compared to open traditional approach and should never be considered in tumors over six centimeters in size. Or four, laparoscopic surgery for pheochromocytomas can be performed safely with relatively little blood loss. So which is not true? Three, excellent. All right, thank you very much. Thank you.